Sit back, relax, put your belt on, and enjoy the show. And for the main course, we are joined by Nick Mercado, who has been Australian rugby broadcasting legend in our eyes, mate. A stalwart. How are you doing? Yeah, good. You can keep that up. That's 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 a great intro. Oh, mate, it's it's definitely going to keep coming. I, <laughs> there's been some big changes uh, for all of Aussie rugby in in 2021, but. I mean, you're you're right amongst it. You you can now find you on rugby on nine, hosting rugby on nine, and Stan Sporter. How are you finding those changes? Yeah, loving it. I mean, I you know, um, I guess for those who sort of follow rugby and and have watched rugby on Fox over the years, yeah, I, I left Fox at the start of um, last year, and uh, which was wasn't wasn't a great year to be looking for a job, let me tell you. Um, so I was pretty pleased when I got a whisper that, um, that, that Nine and, and Stan were, were hunting the rights. Um, and yeah, I just uh, ended up having a couple of very fruitful chats and here we are. But I feel really privileged to be mm. back in it and, and doing what I love. And, and, you know, particularly when I look around and I, I know a number of um, people in media, in particular, but all in particular, but all across all walks of life since COVID here, you know, they talk about um, jobs booming and and uh, you know unemployment getting back under control. I can tell you, in the media industry, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, yeah exactly. um, So feeling very privileged to be doing what I'm doing and and uh, get to uh, it's not really work. It's you know get to go and have fun every weekend. Well, we we feel privileged to have you, you know, in our ears, mate. Definitely, it's it's we're been pretty, great. We're pretty vocal, I think, when you when you <laughs> left Fox, that we wanted to back. So we were very happy when the announcement came through, mate. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Speaking of last year, I think you you started your own podcast, the Playmakers Playbook. Um, how how did that go, and and how did that start up? Um, yeah, well, that, that was I I do need to say that I did that before. COVID, you know how once COVID hit, everybody started a podcast. <laughs> I, I, I tend to point out that um, that I did that beforehand. No, it was really good, and for me, it was um, a bit of a learning experience. You know, like um, to get to talk to people who I mostly had uh, things to do with over the years, and to reconnect with people I hadn't um, spoken to for a long time about their time in sport and, and leadership and, and the athletes that they'd worked with. Um, you know, anyone from I think Justin Langer was the first one and he was awesome and Meg Lanning and, and Paul Ruse all the way through to uh, a footy coach that I used to have a bit to do with um, back in Adelaide when I was a lot younger, a um, bloke by the name of Graham Corns who ended up being the inaugural coach of the Adelaide Crows and to be able to reconnect with him and, and just, you know, shoot the breeze was pretty special as well. And um, yeah, it, it, uh, it resonated uh, with a few people. I've got, got a few listens and um, I've actually got about half a dozen sitting in the, in the can ready to go uh, for a second series, but it's just finding time to put it all together. But it's amazing. That's next question. So good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. And, and again, I've just maybe towards the end of this year, I might get stuck into that. It's, um, it's interesting when you start thinking a little bit, uh, you know, sort of left of center. Okay. Well, who's, who's got something to do with sport? And there's a couple of them fairly tenuous links. So one of the, one of the women that I spoke to is um, Kerry Chikorovsky. Now, you know, everyone knows her history in, in politics. You think, oh, what's she got to do with sport? And again, you know, fairly tenuous, but she's a massive um, uh, promoter and supporter of women's rugby. And she's got, and, and she's been on the board um, also in New South Wales rugby. So she's, she's got sort of close ties. And it's amazing when you get people who, uh, maybe aren't heard of all that often, but have really view, strong views about sport and leadership in sport, you actually get a bit of a different take on things as well. So, yeah, yeah hopefully I'll get towards uh, the end of the year and find some time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we, we look forward to it. Look, let's let's jump into the previews for round two of Super Rugby Trans-Tasman. Hopefully we'll see some Aussie wins along the way. I know we're all waiting for them, but the first matchup <laughs> is the Hurricanes. Hold on, hold on, just quickly. Didn't you tip five Aussie wins last week? My my <laughs> my betting su- suggested that that was a good idea. There were some pretty big odds, so I thought I'd take it. There were. There were, and I think I think um, I think those calculations were actually being done in the office at, at Nine and Stan Sport today yeah. by a couple of. Uh, I, I don't I don't punt, but uh, but some do, and um, and I think what was on offer was 
for that was yeah. um, was pretty special. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I was willing to risk five dollars to make one hundred and sixty-six grand, and sure, <laughs> I and threw, how did that I threw go my work it? behind it, but I, I didn't truly believe in them. But <laughs> <laughs> look, the the first matchup is the Hurricanes versus the Rebels. In the new injuries, we've got Ruben Love. He had a pretty, you know, pretty hard to to watch injury mm-hmm. um, with his neck. He got stretched off. That took a bit of time as well, but. And, and rushed to hospital as well, I think, after that match. They went on scan him. Yeah, and, and before the end of the game, apparently that already ruled out a serious neck injury. So apparently he was up and walking around shortly after that. So they said he's pretty banged up and sore, so he was going to miss one week. Yep. So hopefully we see him next week. Uh, a big couple names in the returns column. We have Nani Mape returning into that side for the, the centres for the Canes. Are you excited to see him? Yeah, he's just a tank, isn't he? I mean, we've been wondering when he would come back. Um, that's yeah, that's um, that's pretty cool to see him back. And and again, um, we saw what they did in terms of attack, and with him there, it's going to be even better. Um, they are going to be a massive handful for the Rebels, um, who I was yeah you know, really disappointed with last week, and I think most people. Yeah. Would, would agree with that. But the Hurricanes, there's an opportunity there. I think if you can make them work a little bit harder for their tries and you want to turn that game into a grind. And and um, what the Waratahs didn't handle at all was anything that was coming at them that was unstructured, anything from, from broken play. They were, they were just all at sea. And yeah. what are the New Zealand teams and particularly the Hurricanes, what do they love to do? You know, so, so if you kick the ball back, you've got to... You've got to do it with accuracy yeah. and intent and thought and method. You can't just bomb the ball back because they're just going to bring it back straight at you and, and you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. So, yeah, like if the Rebels can can stiffen up their defence and, and make the, the Hurricanes work a bit more for their, uh, for their tries, then they'll be in the hunt. But the flip side of that is um, it's just hard to see with the Rebels at the moment where they're yeah. going to score enough points. <clears throat> they, they just don't have a a threatening or functioning attack at the moment. Yeah, through through Super Rugby AU, I think they had an ability, especially earlier on the season, to bring other teams down to their level. Their, their defence was quite solid and they kicked the points when they were on offer and, and they kept those games tight. And it's definitely something they're going to have to do here. I think one thing that's quite clear for, for me is they're trusting Matt Tamua to move into Tuomua, to move into 12, to defend in that Laomape channel because he mm. is a hard man to stop. But Tuomua is good one-on-one. I, I actually reckon they're just going to put Carter Gordon out to the wing for, to, for defence. Truly, Campbell Magne will defend at 12 and Andrew Kellaway will defend at 13 or George Worth plays in the centres as well. So I think you'll find that the the defensive line is, is not putting Carter Gordon anywhere near Laomape. That'll mm. be the name of their game plan. Mm. Mm. No, and, and getting back to what... Um, what the Rebels did earlier in the season by taking points and creating scoreboard pressure. Yep. Um, and they had a, a modicum of success with that, but I, it just feels like you're not going to beat the Hurricanes by by taking three. You, yeah. you have got to score some tries because you know that even if you defend well, they're going to score tries yeah, with definitely. the team that they've got. So uh, they've, they've got to find something else apart from that that strategy and you know, I don't know whether we're going to talk about the the coaching situation, but Sean Byrne was in charge of their attack. Now, depending on you know what you hear, he is very good attack coach, um, and there's a a school of thought that maybe you know he wanted to do a few things uh, with the Rebels' attack, and uh, and he was overruled. So, mm. so with the the case or not um but you know either way i guess it doesn't really matter because he's not there anymore um along with dave vessels um so you know kevin foot uh he's he's under some pressure i guess um one week into his interim <laughs> coaching uh career um you know i'm sure he would love to put his hand up and 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 have the job uh, well, he's got four or five weeks to, to prove that he's the man. You, you've got to think with such a short turnaround in a season like this where you're up against such challenging competition every week, he's not going to go in and reinvent the wheel, right? Like he's just going to make a couple of small tweaks and try and get the guys oh, up. You, you, you just can't. You, you, you say that, but look at their team this week. It's completely different. I, I, I think this is 
That's, a year. That's mainly because they signed <clears throat> Andrew Kellaway. Campbell Magnet is now fit again. And Carter no. Gordon's had a couple of games to actually get an well, opportunity. Realistically, Magnet has been playing, but he's been playing in that, that 12 jersey. And, and Matt Tamu has had... You know, too much, you know, too much to do on his hands all by himself. So they've shifted him to twelve and and brought in another playmaker. What do they have to lose? This is <laughs> this is a chance really for them to you know blood. I think guys like Carter Gordon because he's a he's a player that they'll probably rely on a fair bit in in twenty twenty two in my eyes. So you know, when when better to give him a shot than now. Yeah, and and I would I would say that um, Campbell Magno is probably. I mean. To me, that team probably looks a little bit better on paper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably haven't got enough of. Um, we haven't really seen enough of Carter Gordon to <clears throat> to know if he's really got it at this level. We're yeah. about to find out, aren't we? But <laughs> Tamur at twelve, yeah. um, very good defensively. So he shores that up and and pushing Campbell Magna out one to thirteen. And he, he is a thirteen. He's yeah. a thirteen who's been playing twelve. So mm. he's probably a better outside center and. Um, and then also in terms of some grunt, and they're going to to need it with um, Trevor Jose coming back and Izzy Nisarani yep. as well. Um, so that uh, that makes a difference in the pack. And and we saw that obviously the very very good um, very very good eight that the Hurricanes have got. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more physicality and size for the Re- Rebels, which I think they were they were pretty undermanned in that category last week. Uh, on the flip side, talking about the Hurricanes changes, you've got Tyrell Lomax coming back in at tight head prop. Uh, exciting young prop Alex Fidel, uh back to the bench as well. So that's a big change for them to bring that experience in. And then Isaiah Walker-Leawere as well as a guy that we've been really excited to see more and more from. I, I, I think that he was sold without being spectacular yeah. last week. But uh, the experience of Scotty Scrafton comes back into their 23 as well. So I think there's, there's a couple of big name players if you're talking about shoring up forward packs that the Hurricanes have just made some good changes themselves as well. Yeah, and the, the thing is with the Hurricanes, um, and I made, <laughs> I made the point last week and got laughed at because it's a, pu- it's a purely hypothetical point, but... Um, I think it was something like half a dozen matches they uh, dropped by six points or fewer <clears> in, in Super Aviati Row. So although they finished last, they weren't that far. You know, they yeah. were within a converted try most weeks. And you put into context that you've, you've taken Bowden Barrett and TJ Perinara out of that team. Um, it's hypothetical to say you put them back in the team and they probably win most of those games. I know you can't do that because they're not well, that, that they weren't signed during the season. But but I think what I'm trying to say is it's a really good team. Like yeah. there's it's not like you look at them and go oh they well, they they struggled all year in Super Rugby Aotearoa. They mm-hmm. lost some close matches um, that could have gone either way. So yeah, you know, and and who's to say that they might be there at the end in in five weeks time and yeah. uh, and challenging in the final. I think that. You know, they've got that about them. So for that reason, and they've got depth, what you just, the changes you've just described, um, they've got depth as well. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big ask for, uh, for the Rebels. Well, there's, there's a couple more changes you're talking about. I don't, I don't disagree with your, you throw Perinara and Barrett back into it that they'll get a handful more wins. I definitely don't disagree. The because, Blues would be disappointed about that. But TJ yeah. Perinara is a realistic option considering he's signed, right? Like, no, he can only come in for injury. Um, but they just have, take someone out. Yeah, they've, <laughs> they've had, well, they've got loves injured. Can they, can they bring him in? Say it's worse than it is. Uh, look, they've got T- uh, Taumatini and Ledger going into that nine and ten jersey. So some changes from last week with the injury of Love um, and Campbell also dropping out of that that starting side. So there's a few changes there. I, I think they're positions that you know they have been fiddling around with um, throughout the year, and, and I don't think it's solid there. So maybe maybe that's a chance for the Rebels. Well, I think that's definitely been their biggest weakness and, and probably the reason why they lost by those small margins. And and as I think you, you said, Nick, I, I think the 9 and 10 that you're talking about are just these well-established players that control games and can provide a few points themselves. It's it's definitely where they have the, gla- the glaring hole, the gaping hole. But I, I find the question from the 2020 season to now 
one further one man further out is a really interesting question it's peter among jensen who's just dropped mm. off the side again do you guys talk about uh his role this year and his form because he's someone that had an absolute breakout year last mm. year even got capped by the all blacks and seemingly yeah i know he had a baby and he was away on maternity leave at the start of the season and yeah, since no. he just can't get his way back in yeah i'm not to be honest i'm not across that at all um but i thought he was pretty good last week yeah yeah he was. um so whether there's something more to that? Well, it's, it's his problem is that so was Billy Proctor. No, his problem is <laughs> it's not too hard to look good against Aussie teams at the moment, <laughs> against the Waratahs. <laughs> uh, he didn't he didn't do it against the Kiwi sides. That's that's the issue. But mm. yeah, look, hopefully that the starch defense with Tamor and a 12 will will sort of make it a little bit trickier for, for the Hurricanes this week. But look, how do you you see this going, Nick? Do you think that the, the Rebels can get it done or it's gonna to be too much for them? Oh, no, I think far, far too much from that. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I hate I hate doing that because I'm very much a, a glass half full. Of, you, yeah. know, if, you know, there's usually a way of saying, well, if they can do this and this and this, you know, they'll be in the game. But I just can't see, um, I just can't see how the Rebels, from what we saw last week and, and really what we saw towards the back end of Super Rugby AU from the Rebels as well. Yeah. I just don't see... I don't see any area of the game where you go, oh, well, you know, maybe they, they could they could squeeze something there or they could tinker with something. I just I just can't see it. I think it's it's hurricanes by by plenty. Yeah, yeah I agree. Harry. It's, it's probably I think it's a better matchup the for the rebels than it was for the Tars. Like I, I think that the Hurricanes don't score as much through their their front row. So I think or, or don't don't get such a dominant scrum. And I don't think that's the Rebels' massive strength at the moment. So I don't think that they lose too much out there. I think they've made a lot of changes to their back line, which shores them up a little bit as well Maybe. if they gel. Mm-hmm. Um, but I agree. I, I think Hurricanes just too much firepower. And I, I'd, I'd love to see some light, but I'm going to say Hurricanes by 18. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say Canes by 20 was yeah, I think what I'm thinking. Think well, um, very generous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But that's the, that's our glass half full, I suppose, saying only lose by 20 or 18. <laughs>